let me start with the presentation. I'm going to mostly uh, do live coding, so um, not many slides, uh, but uh, let me show some slides first. Um, so who am I? Uh, my name is Sergio Delamo. I live in Spain, in a city called uh, Guadalajara, close to Madrid. I am I've been involved uh, with the MyCloud framework since uh, its in inception uh, back in 2017-2018. Uh, uh, I am currently a member of the MyCloud uh, Foundation Board of Directors, and I am the lead, the MyCloud lead uh, here at a company called uh, Object Computing Inc., uh, which is a main ambassador of, uh, a main sponsor of the uh, MyCloud Foundation. The MyCloud Foundation is a foundation uh, that uh, helps uh, pays the salary of uh, of me and other colleagues to work uh, full time on the framework and also help us uh, advocate uh, and talk in conferences such as these ones about the framework and we have other great sponsors such as Microstreams, such as uh, Safri on the Visor Games, uh, Gradle Enterprise, uh, and JetBrain. So thanks, every, thanks a lot to uh, all of the sponsors of the Micro Foundation for. Um, allow me to be here uh, with you today and also uh, many thanks to all the sponsors of uh, JCon as well. Um, what is the MyCloud framework you may be asking yourself? Uh, so it's a, a modern JBA framework. Uh, it was designed, uh, what do I mean by modern? It was designed in uh, 2017 uh, mostly by the same persons who were behind another JBA framework uh, named Grails. Um, uh, so with all the lessons learned uh, by building a framework, uh, this is like the second album of the of the same group, uh, and uh, we uh, essentially build uh, a JBA framework uh, targeting uh, the scenarios that are um, necessary today, such as microservices, uh, containers, the fast start time, etc. Uh, you can build any kind of application with Micronaut. Uh, we like to say that MyCloud is a foundation framework, so you can build uh, from uh, command line applications to monoliths, to microservices, to command to serverless functions. So you, I am a very fan of deploying uh, Micronaut uh, applications to AWS Lambda, for example. Uh, it is highly optimized. Uh, uh, we use the Java notation processors and uh, Groovy SD transformations to essentially it generate at build time uh, most of the brains of the framework. So uh, what the framework does build time is we generate all the uh, dependency injection and configuration uh, information. We generate also information about annotations. We uh, generate AOP proxies. Uh, we generate uh, bin introspection. So we are able to instantiate uh, classes without using reflection. And essentially, every uh, built infrastructure and at runtime, we don't do any reflection. We don't do any proxy generation no dynamic class load, no class path, class path scanning. So essentially what we like to say is that Micronaut is a, a framework uh, which has a really smart uh, compiler and a, a not so smart runtime. Uh, and that uh, typically traduces in a low memory consumption and a faster startup time. As its core, uh, we have a dependency injection based on the specification uh, JSR uh, 330. You can use the standard uh, Jakarta inject uh, dot inject annotation or the Jakarta uh, dot inject uh, dot singleton to define the singleton. Uh, you can specify configuration in all the formats that you uh, probably are expecting. So you can specify configuration in dot properties files, in YAML files, TAML files, uh, Groovy files, or config4k. If you are into the Kotlin uh, side of things, uh, we have also like a, a, mic, a MyCode validation module, uh, which uh, gives you a, a subset of the Beam validation specification. Um, so you can use the standard uh, constraints annotation that you are used to, the add pattern, add not null, at not blank, uh, those annotations that allows uh, to have um, valid data flowing through our applications. It has a really nice, uh, uh, aspect orienting programming paradigm. Um, I have another talk after this talk where I will be talking about Micronaut and its integration with MicroStream uh, persistent engine. Uh, and uh, for example, in that module, uh, we have several annotations uh, uh, around methods, uh, which uh, will uh, ease uh, the working of uh, working with MicroStream. And I think that's a good example of how 
easy and powerful uh, Micronaut AOP is. And uh, last but not least, a Micronaut ships with a built-in HTTP client. So if you work with Micronaut, you don't have to uh, use like an, an extra uh, HTTP client such as Retrofit or, or something like that. Uh, we have a great HTTP client which allows you to use like a low level uh, or a declarative where you declare like an interface and Micronaut at build time will implement the interface for you and I will show you in a demo. Um, Micronaut is open source, is a Apache 2 license, so no strings attached. Uh, we follow semantic versioning quite strictly. The idea here is that uh, you don't have any surprises, no breaking changes between patch or minor versions, uh, uh, new features in minor releases, uh, patches in uh, bug fixes in patch releases. And typically we release a major version every year. Uh, we are targeting a MyCot 4 uh, by the end of this year. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, MyCode, as I said, is a JVM framework. You can write your MyCode applications with either Java, Groovy, or Kotlin. Uh, we support in the version uh, three of MyCode, we support uh, JDK 8, 11, or 17. So the latest, uh, the three latest uh, LTS releases of Java. Uh, we are built agnostic. You can build your applications with either with the Maven or uh, Gradle. We have built plugins uh, for both of them which will make your uh, builds even uh, more uh, succinct and more uh, nicer. Uh, we are testing framework agnostic. Uh, you can use uh, JUnit 5, you can use the Spock framework, or you can use uh, code test. Uh, we are also reactive library agnostic. Um, you can use RxJava 2, RxJava 3, Project Reactor. Uh, the internals of the framework are built with, uh, when we need that reactive library are built with Project Reactor, but we are not exposed to any APIs um, coupled to Project Reactor, so you can use whatever you, you want. Um, we are cloud agnostic. We support the four major cloud vendors, uh, uh, AWS, uh, Google Cloud, uh, Microsoft Azure, and Oracle Cloud. Um, we have uh, support, for example, for serverless in all of those clouds. So we have support for uh, AWS Lambda, uh, for Google Cloud Functions, for Google Cloud Run, for Azure Functions. Um, you can generate, for example, an application in NoobsGen and deploy directly to Azure. Um, and because uh, MyCod makes most of its uh, work at build time, since uh, MyCod creation, we have been a match uh, made in heaven for GraalVM. So GraalVM is a polyglot uh, virtual machine uh, and one of the most interesting components of GraalVM, especially for us JVM developers, is uh, native image uh, or native executable generation. Uh, so you can generate a GraalVM native executable of your micro application release. In fact, we have um, tasks in our build tools, which will allow you to do that uh, and generate a, a native image of your application. Um, we uh, support, we have a micro HTTP server and we have different runtimes. The default runtime is the netty runtime, but we have other runtimes such as uh, some servlet uh, compatible runtime such as Tomcat, Jetty and Undertow. Uh, the default one that you will use when you create a micro application and let you specify otherwise, it will be netty, but you can uh, have a micro application which doesn't use any HTTP server layer. And it's for example, a pure Kafka consumer. Um, so quite quite flexible in that uh, regard. Uh, and I want to show you a demo uh, next. Um, are there any questions so far? So I think no questions. So the home of Micronaut is, uh, as you can imagine, um, the website of the framework, uh, which is uh, micro.io. Uh, and uh, the easiest way to generate an application is either to use the MyCode command line interface. So we have like a CLI tool, or you can go here and click launch or here launch, or if you remember the URL, the URL will be launch.mycode.io. And here uh, you will have like uh, several options of, uh, it will let you choose the language that you want to use, the build that you want to use, the testing framework and features. Uh, we have many features. Uh, the framework is quite uh, big. Uh, I, I told you that it's modern. Uh, so we released the version one in 2018, but 
Uh, we are closely approaching uh, MyCode 4, so we have integration with all the technologies that you may imagine. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, generate an application, a default application. Let me uh, do here, uh, I'm going to say JCon22 demo um, or JCon demo. And I'm going to go, let me go with 17 or 11. Let me go with the defaults. Um, 11, I'm going to say uh, Java Gradle the unit. This is going to download a zip file in my computer, uh, which is here. Uh, I'm going to uh, unzip it and I'm going to drag and drop it into my ID. Uh, we have uh, my code works really well with IntelliJ IDEA. Uh, you can use uh, other people use uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, so there is nothing. Uh, you can use any IDE that you uh, that is able to run greater than Maven, basically. Uh, and the only consideration that uh, I typically like in both in IntelliJ when I'm working with Gradle or Maven is to delegate uh, to those build tools. So I will uh, make sure that I am delegating here to Gradle. So I'm going to go here and build and run using Gradle and run test using Gradle. And I'm going to make sure that uh, my project is using the correct uh, JDK. Because I am normally changing JDKs during my work day. So the defaults I'm using 11. Um, how do you run a micro application? Uh, we have a main class uh, and you can just uh, run that class. Or you can just run the Gradle task, Gradle run, or the Maven goal, uh, Maven, Maven MN run. So the application is starting in less than a second. The uh, one thing that you're going to see is that micro is really fast, and that's not just for development or for production, but this is especially for me, the key here is that this is going to uh, speed development because you are going to see that you're going to write many more tests and the tests are going to be executed quite fast. Um, so the application is running. If I visit the URL, it's going to tell me that not found because I don't have anything. So let's uh, start by creating something. Uh, and I'm going to go here and I'm going to say, um, I'm going to create a controller. Uh, just to be original, I'm going to name it uh, Hello World Controller or Hello Controller. Uh, and I'm going to annotate the class with Add Controller. So, how do you define a controller in Micronaut? You annotate it with Add Controller. Uh, how do you define a get route in Micronaut? You annotate it with Add Get. And I'm going to uh, say here this is going to be a string. And this method is uh, I'm just going to set the, the visibility of the controller to be package private, just to be clear that the framework is instantiating the controller for us. We don't never like instantiate the controller. Um, controller is going to be a singleton in our application. And I'm going to return here a uh, hello world. Um, again, back to the topic that Micronaut is a modern framework. Micronaut by default uh, think that you are uh, talking JSON. So if you are uh, not talking JSON, you can specify the content type of your response. So I'm going to say this controller is going to send a text plane. Uh, and I can now uh, run the controller or run the application. And I'm going to open a terminal and make the font big so that you are able to see it, um, hopefully. And I'm going to do a, a car request. Uh, car uh, localhost, uh, localhost 8080 minus i or minus i. Yeah. And there you go. A 200 OK response. So by default, if you, you can, of course, control uh, the um, uh, HTTP status code that you are responding. But by default, if you uh, don't specify it will be a 200 OK. And here we are returning a hello world. And because we changed the content type, we are returning the HTTP header content type with the text plane. Uh, content, uh, I told you that uh, we have a built in uh, HTTP client. And I told you that it's really easy to test with my code. So let me show you that. Uh, so I'm going to write a test. I'm going to call this test uh, hello controller. Let me make the font a bit bigger uh, just to make it easier for you to see. Sorry about that. Um, let me make here 22. And here 22 as well. 
So hopefully this helps. Uh, font is a bit bigger. Uh, I'm gonna make the controller. Um, I'm gonna create a test. Um, and I'm gonna create a test, a JUnit test, nothing fancy here. I'm gonna say uh, hello uh, controller test. Uh, we have an annotation in my code called uh, at a micro test, which will uh, by default it will run an embedded server. It will run the real application. No mock. This is the real app. I'm gonna say here micro test. This will run uh, the real application. Now I can. Uh, inject an HTTP client. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, I'm gonna inject an HTTP client pointing to my server. How do I inject in the test uh, a dependency? I use the uh, Jakarta inject annotation uh, and the client I'm gonna point to the root of my application. And this is uh, the my code HTTP client. I'm gonna, this is a genuine test. So I annotate the test with uh, hello world, um, okay. I annotate my test with a test. Uh, typically, the MyCode HTTP client, you work with two methods, uh, exchange or retrieve. Exchange when you care about the um, HTTP response envelope, which is what I care. And as you see, the MyCode HTTP client is um, gonna return a reactive stream publisher. Uh, in a test, typically, you don't care about reactive uh, return types. So what I'm gonna get is I'm gonna get the blocking HTTP client which is gonna return blocking uh, types. Uh, and in a test is probably what you want. Uh, so I'm gonna say, this is my blocking HTTP client client. And now I'm gonna send a request. How do you send a request in micro? Well, we have a Fluent API for request. We have a class that as you could have guessed this name request. And there are like a static methods for each of the HTTP uh, verbs. So I have like a add get here. And uh, because this controller was in the root of my application, the apex of my app, it's gonna be just uh, like this. And I'm gonna say that I accept the, um, so again, the same as in the server, the client um, by default expects as you are talking JSON. So here I'm gonna say, I expect, uh, I accept a response of type uh, text plane. I'm gonna assign this to a variable and I'm gonna do client exchange request. And I'm gonna take the response and assign it here, response, and by diff, I can specify uh, the body type. So I'm gonna say, this is gonna be the body type, try to bind it to a string. And uh, what can I do in, in JUnit? So I can say assert equals, and I can say this is, I expect that my application is gonna respond okay. There you go. Uh, let me run, run the test. Let me run the test. Test is green. Uh, let me try something else, which is, let me try to see if the body actually contains um, Hello World as well. Run it again. It does. Uh, I told you that uh, we have uh, the ability to declare um, a declarative uh, HTTP client. So let me uh, let me do that. Let me do like hello uh, hello controller client. Uh, this could be like an interface and that can out with add client. I think I can just do like this. And the same, I could do I use the same annotation and this is gonna be a string indexed and the other way around in a controller, you will use the add uh, produces annotation in the client, you will use the add consumes. Uh, and I'm gonna say media type, check plane. And in theory, I should be able to inject this class in my test, for example. So I'm gonna inject here this interface that Microt is gonna, um, implement at, let me just run the test to see if the uh, interface is correctly. So I should be able to call the declarative client index. So remember this is an interface that, uh, this is an interface that we just created, annotated with that client. Uh, my code will implement this interface at compilation time for me. So if I run the test, hopefully the test will pass. 
So this is what we typically refer to as a manual HTTP client. This is what we typically refer to as a declarative HTTP client. A declarative HTTP client is an interface where you add the add client annotation and my code will implement it at build time. Declarative HTTP client uh, support, you don't have to hard code a URL or a sub path of your application. You can point to an external API as you can imagine. And we support things such as load balancing, uh, you can have like a, an identifier and uh, through a um, service discovery, retrieve the URL that your client needs to communicate on. So really, really powerful and really, really nice HTTP client to work with. Um, next, uh, I want to show you a validation or actually let me show you something else, which is let's return a, a Pojo uh, and uh, let's... Um, And let's, we can add the, uh, add introspective or if you are using microcellization, microcellization is um, our approach uh, to replace JSON data bind, uh, not just JSON, you can, not just JSON serialization, but if by default, micro will use now JSON uh, to serialize this object into JSON, and we will be able to, um, you can use my consolidation, which I have not included in the project when I created it, to generate like JSON without uh, using Jackson data bind at all. And that will be like a more uh, secure and restricted serialization module, and also a serialization module which doesn't use any, any reflection at all. So let me use uh, our default uh, Jackson uh, serialization. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to say this is a, a final string, and I'm going to generate a constructor and a getter for this. And in my controller, instead of returning a plain text, I'm going to return JSON. So I'm going to return JSON. So I'm going to change the return type of my controller, and I'm going to create this message. Um, and the test is going to fail. Let me just see the test read, because now I am not returning a hello world, but a JSON object. So I can um, I can just uh, I could fulfill the text by doing something like this. And just changing this to be like the JSON object, right? Let me just uh, be a good citizen and start this into expected. Um, run the test. Hopefully, the test will be green now. Uh, I, the test is not green. Uh, let me remove the, the plain text. Let me change the client as well to uh, return a mess. What am I doing correctly? So the controller is rendering still as uh, is rendering like the two string of message because I forgot to remove the the. At produce is now I get a different error, um, not acceptable. And I think that not acceptable is probably here because I was that I wanted a plain text response. So now I have like a, a JSON response. So by default, JSON, if you talk JSON, you don't have to specify the content type or the accepted DP header, neither in the server nor in the client. My test is green. Of course, you can bind. Uh, to a Pojo here as well. So I can bind to message and I can bind here and do here. Um, so you don't have, of course, you don't have to work like with a string. You can bind to objects that response with the micro HTTP client uh, quite uh, easily. Um, so let me talk to you about, let me show you about uh, dependency injection. So uh, I have this controller, which is um, 
just written in hello world. I'm going to create like a, a message composer. Um, let me create this as an interface. Uh, I'm going to create a class called a message composer implementation. And I'm going to implement the message composer. A message composer uh, is going to have a method called compose. Uh, I'm going to implement it. Uh, and this is going to return uh, hello world. I'm going to inject a bin of type. Uh, So for, for the message compose implementation to be a singleton, you have to add the a singleton annotation. So this is going to be a singleton in the framework. And now I'm going to be able to inject a bin of type message composer. So I am able to do here. Um, Mycot supports different kinds of injection, different types. Uh, so I'm going to show you the three injection types that we support. So I'm going to use constructor injection. So I'm going to define, uh, this is the preferred uh, injection that we recommend you to use because it clearly conveys the dependencies of the class. It clearly it allows you to declare this as a final as well. So it's kind of more immutable. Um, and I am able now to do here a message composer compose. And I have a rerun the test. The test is still green. I'm going to uh, remove the singleton annotation and I'm going to run the test. And you're going to see that the error message with microbes are quite cool. Um, so it's telling me that uh, no bin of type message composer exists in the hello controller. So it's, it's couldn't inject a value for parameter message composer. So it's telling me exactly what it has happened. It's telling me that it's not able to inject, a, a, it's not able to find a bin of type message composer because I have a, removed that single annotation. So let me add it back and run the test again. So it works. Um, maybe some of you are used to use a uh, field injection uh, in Grails or in uh, Spring Boot. Uh, so you can use field injection if that's your cup of tea as well. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, not a private because otherwise you will have to do this via reflection. So I'm going to use package private, for example. I'm going to inject uh, using the Jakarta inject annotation and I'm going to run my test and the test should be green still. And uh, we can use all, I typically never use a, a method a parameter injection, but you can do something like a populate a message a composer, a message composer, message composer, this message composer, message composer, and use at inject here in the method. And this should work as well. So constructor uh, injection, field injection, or a method parameter injection. Uh, our recommendation is that when possible, you use constructor injection. In fact, I'm going to go back to use constructor injection myself. And IntelliJ is really kind to uh, help me generate a constructor. So let, that's, that's there. So the three kinds of dependency injection um, so another thing that we typically need to do in applications is uh, configuration injection. So uh, let me do just that. So I'm going to create a class key app uh, config. Let's create an interface. Uh, and I'm going to create, you can, you can use add configuration properties annotation that I'm going to just show you directly in an interface, but I'm going to just use the class to show you. Uh, I'm going to do app config uh, properties. Just to more clearly like, uh, separate so the prefix and configuration properties takes a prefix of the configuration. I'm going to say this is going to be a, an implementation of app config and in app config, I'm going to say, I don't know, like uh, get a prefix, for example. Um, and I'm going to here add a private prefix with a getter and a setter. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject a bin of type app config in my message composition implementation. Again, I'm going to use constructor injection. And instead of returning here, hello, I'm going to return 
Uh, I'm going to do a string join app config get prefix um, world and we are going to join these things with um, uh, an empty space uh, so if I run the test the test will fail what I think I will see is um, we will see like a null world and we are expecting so we are returning null world and we are expecting hello world. If you want to have like required configuration, you can do that. And uh, moreover, you can do that. Uh, you can annotate your classes with add context, which is a, a scope that will ensure that these pins are created at um, when the application context uh, is created. So, so I can do here, a, I can say this cannot be blank. So the uh, not blank uh, annotation, the standard not blank annotation will ensure that a string is not null or is not empty. Uh, so I'm gonna annotate this with that context. And when the application starts, so if I run my app now, the app will fail and will tell me that this thing is, so it's telling me that it's not able to instantiate this thing and the error message uh, is probably much better. It's gonna tell me like the prefix cannot be blank so if you want or your company requires or your product requires that the configuration is validated on a startup, you can absolutely do that with add context uh, and uh, the standard uh, validation uh, constraints. Uh, so let's make the application happy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add here app. Uh, so you saw the IntelliJ is autocompleting me. Uh, so a prefix and I'm going to say here, hello. And now if I run the app, the app will start fine. Um, because uh, the configuration is correctly populated. And if I run my test, the test should be green again. So configuration injection, as you can imagine, we support, uh, you can like inject configuration without using configuration properties, although configuration properties are really, really cool. Uh, you can drive bin creations through configuration by using things such as each properties. Um, so all the things that you are used to in a modern framework to inject configuration are available in micro, of course. Um, let me show you validation. Uh, we are uh, strong believers that uh, applications should use validation. And when you generate an application, we are adding both uh, validation here, uh, the HTTP validation for routes uh, uh, that will be done at compile time and the micro validation. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna uh, do something which is uh, let's let's do something which is let's create like a, a nullable string. Um, let's do like a path variable called something like name. I like to specify here the, the path variable annotation, just to be clear that this is a path variable, you don't need to. Uh, this is kind of redundant, but that's kind of my cup of tea, be one extra uh, clear step. And I'm gonna say uh, name, I'm gonna pass the name to the interface. So let's add name to the parameter and let's modify the implementation. Um, so we are gonna say hello and the name that uh, we are supplied um, and uh, the test is gonna fail now, right? Uh, so let me run the test and see it fail. It's gonna it's actually gonna fail with a, a 404 because you're not gonna find the route because we are telling that you have like to specify a path variable. So I can use a, a UD builder to create the route. So I'm gonna say, off and I'm gonna say this is path and let, let me do Sergio here just to be a bit egocentric. Um, so I'm gonna run the test again and now it's gonna return hello Sergio, not hello world, hopefully, hello Sergio. So let me just uh, replace it by Sergio and the test should be green again. Uh, and it's not green because, because, because. is not green in the declarative HTTP client. I'm gonna show you this, that you can add like, um, let me add a variable here called name. So 
So the cloud if HTTP client is not sending a path, uh, is not sending a path variable, um, but we can add a parameter to index called a string name, and we can say this is a path variable micronaut, and it's going to be like this. And if I have a typo like uh, bogus here, uh, and I uh, run my test, the compilation, I think it's gonna fail. Uh, it didn't fail. With the HTTP validation, uh, maybe that's only for the um, main class path. Um, so I wanted to show you validation. So we have a path variable, pretty simple. We came to the controller, uh, this is a standard a specification of how to define like uh, path variables, uh, query value parameters. Uh, so this is not framework specific. This is like kind of following the, the spec. Uh, but as you see, it's pretty simple to uh, to do. Uh, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the validation uh, within my application code. So I'm gonna add the validation here. I'm gonna say this is gonna have to be a pattern, and uh, this is gonna be the pattern is gonna be. Uh, the name has to be either Sergio or John. So the pattern is, uh, this is a regular expression where there is like the pipe, like Sergio or John. Uh, and I'm going to add the uh, annotation here to message uh, compose implementation. Um, and I'm going to run the test. The test I expect to be green. And it is green. And uh, what I'm going to show you is that if uh, we do a request, uh, let me do like a method here, uh, like kind of URI create request or create URI. Let me do here uh, create request. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send another request uh, with a name which is not in the list. And what we are gonna see is that um, that the application throws an exception. So I'm going to run the test. The test is going to be still green uh, when I uh, fix the compilation issues. The test is going to be green. And what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to use the way of um, JUnit to check that an exception is thrown. So my got HTTP client when you receive an HTTP response which is not in the range of uh, 200 and 300, it's gonna essentially encapsulate the response in an exception called HTTP client response exception. And this is what this code is gonna do, is gonna verify that, um, that we are getting an HTTP response exception. Uh, I'm gonna say this is, um, instead of John or Sergio, this is gonna send a foo. And, Let me do like, um, it has to be final. So let me do like request uh, failing and do here request failing. And if I run the test, uh, the test should pass. Uh, let me let me show you the test failing. So I can say like the, uh, the response, con the exception contains the HTTP code. So I can say like, this is gonna be, um, let me see, uh, uh, Okay, and the test is gonna fail because it's gonna tell me like uh, the response is a 400 for the validation error. So as you see, this is a 400. Um, and in the exception, you, you are gonna see like, you will see like the, the validation error. So validation works. Uh, this is gonna be a bad request. So I, I, what I saw in this uh, easy demo is dependency injection with constructor, field injection, uh, method parameter injection, uh, validation, built-in HTTP client, um, 
uh, configuration injection, everything that you can expect in a modern framework. Uh, so what I'm going to show you next is I'm going to uh, go here. Um, and I'm going to try to generate a oof. an ATF image of the application, a Gravity an ATF image. Uh, and while the SDK install, let me uh, give you a, a couple of slides more. Um, so I just showed you the type of the, the tip of the iceberg. So we have integration with messaging modules such as Kafka, RabbitMQ, MQTT, or NATS. Uh, we have a great uh, database migration tools, integration with both Flyway or Luke base. Uh, we have uh, probably one of our more interesting modules, which is MyCode Data, which is a, a persistent module which allows you to work with either JPA or JDBC, uh, JPA with Hibernate or JDBC with uh, repo with interfaces annotated with add repository, which will be built uh, at build time. We have uh, also integration with uh, MongoDB from MyCode Data. Uh, so this is an spectacular and incredible, uh, incredibly fast, uh, persistent uh, uh, module. Uh, we have uh, also integration with Juke. We have integration with Redis, with Neo4j, or with GORM. Uh, you can, as I told you, you can like build uh, monoliths in micro and you can uh, render server-side HTML. And we have some integration with many um, Template engines such as Turbo JT, Handlebars, the Thymeleaf, Pebble Rocker, uh, anything that you can imagine almost. Uh, we have a great micro security model, which personally I am, have been quite involved with, uh, which support uh, session based authentication, uh, LDAP authentication, uh, uh, authentication with a bird token, with, uh, which is a JWT. We support the uh, Open ID Connect authentication with uh, all the providers that you can expect. Also, uh, signing with Google, Okta, Kicklock, uh, Amazon Cognito, uh, OutZero. Um, you can even work with uh, OAuth2 providers which don't support Open ID Connect, such as GitHub. Uh, we have many guides uh, showing you that. Uh, by default, MyCode will respond errors with PND error. Uh, but you can change to respond problem JSON. Uh, let me just try to generate a native image of the application while I keep talking. So um, the uh, Gradle plugin ships with uh, commands to uh, build a native image. So this is one of them, a native compile, and uh, the Maven plugin has like a distribution as well. So we have integration with uh, distributed tracing modules such as Zipkin or Jagger. And we, uh, since version 3.6.0 of the framework, we actually uh, support open telemetry. Um, so with open telemetry, you can, for example, integrate with things such as AWS X-Ray as well. Uh, we support service discovery with services such as uh, Hasip Core Console and many more. So we have uh, many other modules. So let me show you a, an overview of the modules. Uh, we have many, many modules uh, that you can discover if you visit docs.micro.io. And one of the modules that I'm going to be talking uh, 15 minutes from now is going to be MicroStream, which is a great persistent engine. So if you are uh, interested in learning more about MyCode, please uh, visit my next talk. And hopefully, uh, while I am speaking, the Galvian native image has generated, not yet. Um, so this is going to uh, give me uh, a little bit more time to show you uh, the last slide that I have, which is uh, the resources to learn more. One thing that I am quite uh, proud of is uh, our step-by-step -step tutorials collection. Uh, we call them MyCode Guides, uh, and we have them under a subdomain called guides.mycode.io. And we have many, many guides, uh, many guides for different topics, topics such as persistent, topics such as security, cash, anything almost that you can imagine. Uh, and we are writing more and more. And these guides, they contain uh, solutions that you can load. So all of our guides contain like a project that you can uh, download to your computer uh, in, as a zip file. And um, most of these guides, uh, another cool thing is that they are written in three languages and in two uh, build tools. So if you want to use Colin and Maven, you can uh, click that link and you will see like the examples 
uh, in Kotlin, and hopefully if there are like samples of the build tool, they will be in Maven, but they are not in this particular example. But if you click the download link, you will like download directly like a Maven project. Uh, the native image has been generated and it told me the command that is generated here. So let me try to execute it. Um, and as you saw, the application starts in 32 milliseconds and hopefully it's the real application and I can do like a call request against uh, uh, Sergio. And there you go. So native gravity native image generation of the same application you can of course issue this as a fat jar if you prefer to uh, but if your app doesn't use uh, reflect so gravity works with reflection but when the case is that you use reflection you have to provide some extra configuration if you stick to use the micro internals micro internals don't use any reflection at all so you should be able to generate any uh, gravity native image of uh, a micro application just run it as i just saw you um so I think we are on time. Uh, so if there are any questions, uh, I think this will be a good moment to take them. If you write in the chat, uh, I can uh, read them out loud and answer them. And if you don't have any questions, I thank you in advance uh, for attending. <music>